So we, um, last session, we looked at um, the classification of the gifts, the gifts of the spirit. And uh, as Paul writes um, to the believers, we saw the listing of the gifts of the spirit. And also we saw the, um, sorry, the classification about the gifts of the spirit, the ministry, uh, the, the membership gifts and the, uh, and the ministry gifts. Okay, so we saw uh, the places where they are listed, um, but we also need to know that there will be an overlap. And uh, we looked at the example of the gift of prophecy, which is listed in all um, in all three of these uh, listings. So we know that um, there will be an overlap. There could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, even though they are, uh, you know, used in sev uh, in different ways but there will be an overlap or different um, uh, roles uh, or responsibilities of the uh, of the believer uh, but uh, there will be uh, uh, you know there will be an overlap of these gifts right um, okay so let's um, let's just go back to the notes and um, let me just uh, address one question Sorry. Okay. So we're looking at, um, while we look at the gifts of the spirit, um, you know, we, we see this classification, of course, you know, the, the, it, it's actually helpful for us to study, to learn about these gifts. Okay. Um, so, but we also need to understand that we cannot uh, be rigid about it and say, okay, and now, you know, the believer is ministering uh, through the gifts of the spirit. And now here is the membership gift and, you know, and so on. Right. So there will be a, you know, there, there is a growing and uh, there is a under growing uh, from uh, the membership gift into the ministry gift as the Lord calls and so on. Okay. Now um, I just want us to look at one a question that uh, like many people would uh, face or ask based on this scripture, which is 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Okay. Uh, and then I will come back to the gift of the prophecy working through as a gift of the spirit, as a membership gift and, and so on. Okay. So 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28. Now this says uh, in this script, uh, in this uh, verse, uh, I mean this portion, we see uh, Paul writing, and God has appointed these in the church: first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. And after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Um, verse twenty nine: Are all prof apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Okay, so he asked this uh, um, uh, kind of rhetoric, uh, rhetorical question for which uh, the uh, obvious answer is that uh, no. no. The obvious answer is no. Um, so let's look at, uh, you know, each of this. So he's saying... Uh, appoints who appoints god has appointed these in the church so god appoints these or uh, for specifically um for some and not for all oh, that's the implication god appoints these in the church um the word first meaning it's either first in t time or it also talks about uh, rank or place or order Okay, um, so it could be rank or place, or uh, of it could be first in time, first way in first manner in which it unfolded. Right, so God has appointed this, these in the body of Christ in the church. Okay, so which means that God has put some people in these places or in these roles. Okay, so um, let's go back to that verse again. So God has appointed these in the church. He has placed, um, uh, appointed these in the church. Okay, which means it's not all. And the Old King James also uh, translates as some, uh, appointed some, uh, which means specific people and not all, not everyone. 
So it talks about the apostle, it talks about the prophet, uh, it talks about uh, the teacher, and then lists down several other gifts, miracles, gifts of healings, helps, administrations, um, and so on. Okay, so what are these helps? Helps any kind of you know help, any kind of service, any kind of assistance. Um, administrations meaning the ability to govern or uh, uh, um, rule, right? So all these are lifted. So listed here. So we see that it's a it's a list which involves uh, the ministry gift. What we see in Ephesians four. And which is the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And we also see these membership gifts, right? Uh, like, uh, you know, helps or administration and so on. Okay. So what is the conclusion, right? So there are differences we need to know uh, between, you know, the answer is no, obviously. The answer is no, that um, yeah, not everybody is appointed for this. Not everybody is an apostle. Not everybody is a prophet. Not everybody is an evangelist. Okay, so which is fine. But the the problem happens when the problem is when we look at all the others, other listing, right? Uh, um, like gifts of healings, tongues, interpretation, and then we go and say, you know, we say, okay, I, I don't have this, so maybe it's not. I'm not the one who's appointed for this. Okay, but the issue is that. Uh, but uh, the, the 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 thing is in verse twenty eight that it's God who's appointing. You know, He's God is appointing these in the body. He is placing this and calling some specifically for this kind of ministry. Okay, being an apostle, being a pastor, or being an evangelist, being a prophet. God is calling and appointing this in the body of Christ, and it could be a ministry. Again, consistently a ministry of healing, a ministry of you know maybe intercession, praying in tongues, uh, interpretation of tongues, and so on. So the answer is no. Not everybody is called for that kind, or called and appointed in the church in the body for that kind of a ministry. Not all are called. You know, if you look at verse 31, uh, 20, uh, the same chapter. The last verse in the chapter, verse 21, 31, he says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Okay, so again, which means that we ought to desire the best gifts. Okay, what is the best gift? You know, we're going to look at that. It is the it is a gift which is best suited to take care of a particular need or maybe a challenge, right? Um, so if it's uh, if it's some sickness, the best gift there is the gift of healings or if it is if it needs the miraculous intervention of god and uh, that is the gifts of uh, miracles working of miracles right? uh, so that is the best gift which takes care of that need or which which overcomes that particular challenge so paul is saying earnestly desire okay so he's putting the responsibility on the believer and he's saying you earnestly desire okay verse 11 the same one of the same spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually, each one, which is all individually, as he wills, as he desires. But here he's talking about something that you will, you know, that involves your will or involves the will of the believer, saying, earnestly desire. Like you go ahead and you use your choice, you use your will, and you earnestly desire the best gifts. Yes, God. This desire is for him to manifest these gifts, but you desire. Okay, so we see this as well. Um, what, what is it? Uh, you know, some differences between gifts of the spirit and the ministry gifts. Okay, those that are appointed, those that are called specifically and appointed for that kind of a ministry. Okay, ministry gifts. You know, um, you know, simple. Uh, even before we go into that, a simple thing is you know, all are called to evangelize. Okay, so. If you have asked the question, you know, is are, are is everyone called to evangelize? Yes. Share the gospel? Yes. And uh, can everyone do that? Well, the answer is again, yes. Right? But is everyone called to be an evangelist? Right? The answer is no. Right? Uh, and a simple thing would be like, uh, uh, you know, 
can everyone take care of hurts and aches in the body you know if, if there's a cut of course you know we can take care of that we can apply some medication and all that but does that make you a doctor does that make me a doctor because i put some bandaid and took care of some cuts and took care of you know i know how to apply some ointment does that make me a doctor no right so similarly you know we 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 can of course share the gospel we can teach another believer you know what we have learned uh, we can nurture another believer in the faith but that does not make us an evangelist or a teacher or a pastor right though we can do these things right so what is the difference which means that there is a call specific call and specific appointing uh, in the body of christ right which we see in ephesians 4 and uh, 11 onwards for the edification of the body for equipping the saints for the work of ministry and all those things are mentioned there so um so if you look at the questions in 1 corinthians 12 28 and say uh, are are you know are are all apostles or all prophets and then we say okay no so you know maybe you know you or someone you know is not praying in tongues yet okay don't cancel out and say hey, the answer for this is no therefore it doesn't doesn't apply to me right verse 31 don't stop with verse 30 verse 31 earnestly desire earnestly desire the best gifts you go through chapter 13 in 1 corinthians and you come across chapter 14 and verse 1 again he says desire spiritual gifts okay so uh, so that's uh, something that we need to uh, understand okay so let's look at um, okay let's look at the difference between um, the gifts of the spirit and ministry gifts okay the gifts of the spirit are given by the spirit ministry gifts are given by the lord jesus you know we see that uh, differentiation okay um it, these are called gifts of the spirit or manifestation of the spirit um the ministry gifts ephesians 4 talks about how the lord is giving these gifts so we see that difference but we know that it's the triune god Okay, but we see that usage in scripture the gifts of the spirit are available for all believers okay available for all we need to you know we need to understand that ministry gifts are given to some okay only some are called that doesn't make uh, the believer a second class believer or you know no it's just that some are called into the fivefold right okay the gifts of the spirit are directed towards spiritual edif- edification spiritual building up of god's people okay when it comes to the ministry gifts they are directed towards equipping god's people for the work of ministry okay so when we look at these uh, you know the spiritual gifts um, it is for the edification of all you know, building up of all uh, prophecy talks about uh, uh how it brings edification exhortation and comfort right um and uh, and and so and so on so when we look at uh, maybe we can look turn to efficiency chapter 4 efficiency chapter 4 and uh, let's look at uh, verses uh, let's read from verse 11 onwards and then we'll we'll come back to this Ephesians 4 verse 11 okay and he himself referring to the lord jesus he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers okay so you you see that some are apostles some are prophets verse 12 talks about why okay why are they called to be apostles prophets evangelists verse 12 says for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and so on okay so it's uh, so we see one of the primary responsibilities of the, uh, the of this uh, of these ministry gifts okay so, so just guess get familiar with those terms like gifts of the spirit membership gifts 
or uh, ministry gifts. So, so Ephesians 4, we're talking about ministry gifts, right? So these are appointed. These are some who are called and some who are appointed in the body. And we see the primary responsibility as, uh, you know, a prophet, of course, is moves in prophecy, prophesying consistently and uh, and uh, and so on, you know, evangelists and so on. The, the primary uh, um, responsibility or the primary role calling of that calling is to proclaim the gospel but we see another uh, responsibility that is to equip the saints equip the saints the believers for the work of ministry right to equip the believer probably the same things right as a prophet would equip the believer in the church to in the uh, in the gift of prophecy Right. How to move in it? You know what is the gift of prophecy? How does it work? To equip the believer for the work of ministry, so that they would do further, they would serve, or they would do, they would minister. Okay, so which is why you know we say every believer is a minister because a saint is a believer. Right? When we say saint, yes, they are the separated ones, right? The consecrated ones, uh, and we are the saints, and every believer is called to the work of ministry. Okay, It need not be the fivefold. It need not be, um, you know, this is, your, your, it need not be something that you're called and commissioned and placed in the body as the fivefold, but we are called to minister, right? We could be doing, we could be having a vocation, we could be working, we could be running a business, but we are called, every believer is called to minister. Okay, And the fivefold ministry gift operates in order to equip the believer uh, in the five or in the uh, in in these gifts, right, for the work of ministry. Okay, so any any doubts about the spiritual gifts, the gifts of the spirit, the ministry gifts? Is that classification clear? Right. Any doubts? Yeah, yeah, Divya. Thank you, Pastor. Um, my doubt is regarding uh, the ministry gifts. Yeah. Um, one is uh, when Paul says about the church, does it uh, talk about a particular, you know, a particular uh, physical church or is it about uh, the body of Christ as a whole? That's one question. And the other is um, these ministry gifts uh, which are listed, uh, is it like every believer when we say that every believer is a minister? So everyone falls into one of these five categories. Is it right to say like that? Um, okay, so um, okay, this uh, I'll just answer the second question. So we say when we say every believer is a minister, you know, uh, we are not saying that they are called into the fivefold ministry or we are, they are called uh, and appointed as a you know as in these five ministry gifts. You know, when we when I'm just saying that every believer is a minister, um, twelve uh, verse twelve talks about equipping the saints of God for the work of ministry. Okay, so in one Corinthians twelve, we saw there are differences of diversities of, uh, you know, uh, let me just read that diversities of ministries by the same spirit, right? Um, uh, activities, ministries, gifts, right? Verse, verse 5, verse 4 talks about gifts. Verse 5 talks about differences of ministries for the same Lord. And uh, verse 6 talks about di differences of activities, but the same uh, same God, right? So any form of ministry, ministry just means to serve, right? minister to serve. So we see that uh, uh, Romans 12, we see that leadership, compassion, uh, serving, helps administrations all these things by which you serve another like for the profit of all so that it benefits helps someone so uh, we are equipped to serve uh, the body equipped to serve or e equipped to um, uh, if you look at the second part of verse 12 for the edifying of the body of christ right so um, equipping the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying so the uh, when 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 somebody is reaching out, when somebody is equipped to reach out and serve, uh, share the gospel, then you know they are gathering in souls for the kingdom. There is the edifying of the body. When the, somebody is um, you know equipped to uh, nurture uh, another believer in the faith and and get them grounded in the word of God, then again the body of Christ is uh, is being edified, built up. There is spiritual uh, progress. 
right? Um, so that is what uh, we mean when we say they are equipped to. All believers are ministers, and they are equipped for ministry. Okay, so it could be anyone. You know, it could be uh, maybe it's, um, you know they could be uh, software engineers, they could be doctors, they could be you know they could be teachers, school uh, in schools or whatever. You know, they could be homemakers, but they are all equipped to minister. Right, minister to serve. Uh, so that's what it means. So not, uh, not particularly for, uh, you know, not necessarily for fivefold ministry. Well, they could be also, right? Because, but that's a call which God, uh, uh, that's a decision which God takes, right? Because He gave some to be apostles, some to be evangelists, and so on. So we understand that. The first question uh, was about uh, the body of Christ. You know, uh, is it uh, church? Is it uh, you know globally, etc. So when we say uh, the body of Christ, of course, it talks about you know we have several uh, realms of it, right? We, we see the global body of Christ. We see the the uh, you know the body of Christ in a nation and so on, right? So it is applicable. But when we typically talk about um, uh, the, the fivefold ministry, well, uh, the pastoral, you know, it starts, uh, it, it, the local church is, is a wonderful place to start. And yes, it is, the gift is encouraged and established and nurtured in the local church. But the realm of ministry will go beyond the local church, you know, like uh, the apostolic uh, pioneering work, um, starting uh, a new work in areas and opening up new territories and uh, and also new methods of ministry and so on, you know, like just like Paul, the apostle, the sent one. So we know that the realm of influence and the realm of ministry, uh, reach of ministry would go beyond the local church. Right. So uh, like the pastor as well, you know, like the pastor ministry could be the local church, but the, the realm of ministry would would beyond go beyond the local church. A pastor could be a pastor's pastor, you know, pastoring other pastors, which Paul also did for Timothy and um, you know uh, Titus and so on. He was pastoring these pastors, um, mentoring them. Right. So uh, the realm uh, would would be uh, the geographical territory. The realm would be a more of a governing thing, which will go beyond the local church. Right. That helps. Yes. Yes, Pastor. Thank yeah? you so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Isaac, you have a question. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. Um, as already established, the gift of the Holy Spirit is bestowed and available at the will of the Holy Spirit. That means it's given to us believers at the will of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But uh, in the ministry gift, uh, it's a calling. How is this calling made, and how can we recognize that someone or I have been called for this ministry gift? How can mm. we realize, or how is the call made? Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the best thing for any believer is to is to start uh, not be ignorant of these gifts, um, uh, to be um, to be aware that we are equipped we are called to be equipped to minister to serve and to be faithful and start doing this right and to do it consistently to to just start walking in it first of all to start serving to walk in it and uh, and as the lord would open up avenues give opportunities to be faithful in doing it right so um so the lord when he uh, of course we're just digressing a bit but then the lord when he calls us uh, into the fivefold uh, there is the season of training there is a season of uh, training uh, equipping and then comes the commissioning okay if you look at uh, how paul called timothy you know timothy uh, traveled with him he was in i think lystra and derby and in on, on, on his missionary journeys he hears about he has a good reputation and so on and uh, he so he tra starts traveling along with paul and sees and um, and paul obviously taught him by also by precept and also by example of his own lives and own life and also what he saw right so and then comes a time when uh, he is grown and uh, recog and obviously recognizes his uh, role and responsibility and probably he's walking in it you know even when the corinthian church is planted paul is also part of the team sorry timothy is also part of the team that uh, that 
you know, Paul, alongside Paul uh, in the planting of the church. So, uh, in ministering there, so uh, he's done that. And there comes a time when Paul says, you know, you remain in Ephesus, and uh, you pastor the work there. You take care of the work there. So we see, you know, he, as a young man, he's been learning. He's been getting trained. He's equipping. And uh, he's seen how things uh, how things are done, and then comes to a place where he himself uh, is, uh, you know, uh, taking care of that work. So that is one, you know, that one we see that pattern. So, um, so the best thing is for us to start doing it, right, uh, and and not just sit around wait for that, you know, uh, call. You know, uh, well, there would be a significant call. Sometimes, you know, it just happens that God sovereignly has that encounter and then uh, he, you have the call of God. Uh, maybe it's a supernatural encounter and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, you know, or, or it could be that somebody prophesies and then you have the call of God on you. And uh, But the thing is, we go through this path of being trained because God does not want us to be novices, um, inexperienced in, in handling the work. He, he will equip us, he will train us and come to a place of commissioning. And, and this equipping and training, well, it, it can happen uh, you know, it, 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 it involves the body of Christ. You know, it involves uh, God sending several people, uh, using uh, you know, people to mentor us and so on. So we just be open to that uh, and be faithful in serving him. Oh, that's the main key thing. Then we grow in our influence. Then we grow in our understanding. As we grow in our understanding, we grow in our ministering as well. And uh, we see that biblical pattern. Yeah. Hope that helps, Isaac. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, um, I actually asked because um, in our setting, hope I'm not using the time of the class anyway. No, uh, uh, you can ask, yeah. In our setting, what is happening now in our country, you see the prevalence of uh, local churches and uh, young pastors. Some don't even wait to go through mentoring, like you mentioned, mm. the case of uh, uh, Timothy. And the next woman, they break away from one church and they mm. form another church. The next time, they do it there. Yeah. Oh. The next time you will hear, he has been ordained as an apostle. He has been ordained as a bishop. And mm. sometimes, I doubt that. That's why I asked. But he answered properly. Thank you very much. Mm. God. Right. Right, Isaac. Yeah. Okay. So, um, any other questions before we move on? Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, the other fourth uh, difference that we see is uh, is that let me just put that there is uh, I think the question which uh, Divya asked you know is it in a local church context or is it something wider so the gift of spirit if you see uh, usually you know like it's in a local church or local uh, body but then ministry gifts will do this where you know the the gifts of the spirits are um, uh, gifts of the spirit are uh, manifest in the ministry gifts like in the apostle like the the apostle the prophet you know there is a gift of prophecy there is the the evangelist the gifts of healings and miracles and flowing but it is in a wider context it is in uh, you know across the body of christ like maybe to a city to a nation to a entire neighborhood and so on right so we see that okay um we'll come back to some of these other questions you know apostle and prophet you can just go through um on your own and if you have doubts you can uh, answer um it has more to do with the uh, you know with the ministry gifts right so um so you will anyway you know these things will be addressed in um, uh, like the future courses as well yeah so i'm just uh, moving on to um, understanding the gifts of the spirit so we get the underst uh, basic understanding um, we started out looking at a few like uh, firstly we, we saw that you know the gifts of the spirit are given for all believers okay so um, you know how do we say that of course uh, we we looked at you know how all believers uh, are expected to desire all believers are expected to you know desire the best gifts and pursue spiritual gifts and so on pursue love and desire spiritual gifts and so on uh, some other scriptures is you know when you look at um, 1 corinthians 12 and verse 7 it says uh, it's given to each one 
by implication to each one in the fellowship, each one in the gathering, which means to all, right? Uh, Holy Spirit distributes to, uh, gifts to each one. Again, 1 Corinthians 12 and 11 also we see that. Okay, and all believers are expected to walk the more excellent way of love, right? The last verse in 1 Corinthians 12, all believers, it is not for some, but it is for all. Uh, uh, because Paul, let's read that verse, says, uh, earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. He's talking about the way of love. So um, it is for all, right? And again, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1 is also for all believers. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. And uh, if you look at the last uh, but one verse in 1 Corinthians 14, Therefore, brethren, earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. You know, this is again for all believers. So, so we understand that the gifts of the Spirit are for all believers. It's not for a special few right it is not for uh, anointed few but these are available for all believers okay so we we looked at this uh, we won't go into it the gifts of the spirit are a supernatural manifestation so it's something not natural it's not naturally learned or na how we naturally train but we are we receive it in a, uh, it's a supernatural gift a work of the spirit of god okay and these are gifts of grace something that we don't earn, something that is not based on performance. Okay, uh, We see that the gifts of the Spirit are given to build up people. Okay, Edify meaning to build up. Um, it means spiritual, bring spiritual, uh, constructive spiritual progress in people, like edify people. And we know when we learned about you know the what the Holy Spirit does. We know that He glorifies Christ, that like He lifts up Christ. And Jesus, the Lord is Jesus Himself. Uh, you know, uh, described that and ex and explained that. Okay, so to edify people, one Corinthians twelve verse seven, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. One Corinthians fourteen and verse twelve. Since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to accept. Okay, let, it, let this be the uh, focus, why you are zealous for spiritual gifts, that it benefits people, right? It, uh, it's, uh, of, uh, it brings edification. Um, so it's for the profit of all, it's for the edification of all. Okay, um, the gifts of the Spirit are manifested Okay, are expressed when we walk in love, when we also personally desire, and when they when we step out in faith. Okay, we need to understand that. Okay, um, because um, when when we, whenever we look at that verse eleven, you know, one Corinthians twelve and verse eleven, it says, "Yeah, distributing to each one as he individually as he wills." So. It's easy to come to a conclusion and say, if he wants to, he will. If he doesn't want to, he will not. So I'll just stay quiet. Right? It's easy to come to that conclusion. But we, when we read the next, you know, uh, you know, next few verses and the rest of Scripture, rest of the instructions, we see that uh, we are called to desire. We are called to uh, desire. Why? So that we can manifest you know the spirit of god expects us to desire these gifts so that we he might work in us right um okay so some of the uh, simple instruction is that we walk in love okay uh, 1 corinthians 13 talks about walking in love we're going to look at that we walk in love with this with the character and the nature of god himself right we don't walk in hatred we don't walk in pride but we walk in love okay we desire the gifts we walk in love and we step out in faith okay so it involves faith it involves taking that step of faith taking a risk in order to uh, in order to move in these gifts you know the first time i'm sure you know praying in in tongues uh, it involves uh, taking that step of faith and giving voice to those words 
um, that are you know forming in our in your spirit or giving voice to those sounds um, uh, because you don't know these words and you the first time it's happening and and obviously these words seem to be uh, you know devoid of meaning because it's not an earthly language and so we hesitate sometimes you know why should I speak out these words well the thing is that it is by faith which means you you trust God, you believe in him, you trust God, you trust his word, you trust the instruction that is there in scripture, and you step out in faith. You, you say, okay, God, okay, Lord, you know, logically, I don't understand. I'm not able to reason out. But, you know, it, it is explained clearly in scripture, and it is your will uh, to bless all believers, to for, for all believers to receive and walk. So I will step out in faith. Right, and do this right so uh, paul writing to the galatian church in you know uh, galatian 3 verse 2 says this only i want to learn from you did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith and he's talking about the baptism of the spirit how did it happen in faith you obeyed in faith you prayed and this is how you receive right uh, verse 5 therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith okay so the galatian church the problem they had was that there were some people who were coming in and teaching that uh, you need to be circumcised you know you need to obey the law of moses you need to continue in it uh, it's not just enough for you to receive christ by faith or receive the salvation by you know grace um, you know through faith, but uh, but you need to do all this. So he's addressing that, and he's teaching them, and he's saying, you know, did you receive by faith, or was it by law? Okay. So the works of the spirit we receive by faith. Okay. Uh, the miracles, uh, how does it happen? Uh, the, uh, how does the supply of the spirit? You know, how does God do that by the hearing of faith? Okay. So we see that. Romans 12, verse 6, another instruction. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So you see, faith is very much integral part of us moving in these gifts. Right? We receive by faith. We express through faith. Right? So faith is uh, involved in this. Okay. Uh, we looked at that, right? This one, the point number six, which is uh, every believer can manifest all nine gifts of the Spirit. Now, why do we say that? Okay, why do we say every believer can? Uh, several scriptures we we looked at that um, you know the Spirit of God uh, is is distributing to each one. Okay, now in in a gathering, uh, it's distributing to each one, which means all. You know, but how can I say that? A believer can manifest all nine gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Uh, well, the thing, firstly, to understand that the gifts of the Spirit belong to the Holy Spirit. It is it is from Him. And He has come to indwell us. And He is the one who manifests. Right. So, uh, it, He can manifest the gifts of healing, working of miracles, even as I desire the best gift. Right. So, um, and so He he will desire, he will manifest through the believer. So a believer, every believer can manifest all nine gifts of the Spirit. Then when we look at the instruction, right, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 31, it says, earnestly desire the best gifts. So it doesn't stop with one, doesn't stop with two, doesn't stop, you know, he's saying earnestly desire the best gifts. Okay, plural. And uh, the reason is that God wants to manifest. Okay, that's the only desire. Uh, that's the only reason, right? Why should I desire the best gifts, plural? And you know, and God saying, "Okay, I have only one for you," right? Or you know, scripture we see maybe you know, there's only one, or maybe there is none. You know, why should I desire if that is the case? The only reason there is an instruction to desire is that there is the answer that God wants to express in all nine gifts of the Spirit. 
Okay, so so that's something for us to learn, and it, it, I'm sure it's an eye opener. Say, okay, God, you know, I see these gifts, uh, and Lord, you move in through me. Right, uh, I want to minister in these in these in these ways. Okay, because that's a you know that's a very strong instruction. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. So we need to ask ourselves: Am I desiring? First of all, like God desires, it is His will, but what about my desire? Am I desiring? And am I putting a limit on myself or because of some wrong idea or wrong teaching? Right? Am I putting a limit? Am I putting the fence? Um, you know, am, am I restricting myself where God does not restrict? Right? So we need to change. We need to change uh, our mindset and perspective and say, okay, God, you are not limiting. You are not putting limits. You are not closing the doors. But so if you are not doing, then no one else has a right to do that as well. Right? I don't have a right to do that as well. And as an act of humility, Lord, I humble myself and I agree with your word. Right? So, um, so we see that instruction, right? Okay, best gifts are the best ones which are needed for the occasion and best suited for the function uh, or the, uh, you know, the challenge, which is right there before us. Now, yeah, I think someone has a question. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Pastor. Yes, Divya. Yeah. I had a question. So okay. it's based on the last point that was discussed, like every believer can have the nine gifts. Yeah. Uh, all, the so all, the, all the nine gifts. So uh, why is it in First Corinthians 12, verse... Mm -hmm. uh, seven onwards mm -hmm. it says like for to one uh, eight onwards to for to one is given the word of wisdom through the mm -hmm. spirit to another the word of knowledge to another yeah. of... so it uh, seems a little confusing like. yeah yeah so so the thing is uh, it seems contradictory right he's saying you know desire the best gifts and here again uh, 14 also desire the best gifts and then I'm sorry, desire spiritual gifts and then here we seen seven um I'm sorry not seven um uh, which is uh, yeah for eight right um, uh, to one is given was word of wisdom and so so the thing is that it is in the context of their gathering together they are uh, we, uh, we need to understand that as well you know and they are corporately gathering together and uh, uh, you know in a church meeting or a um, or whatever meeting they are gathering together having fellowship and at that you know in that uh, gathering. Um, Yes, one is uh, having a, you know maybe a tongue, and the other one is having an interpretation. One is having a uh, a gift of healing, uh, and the other one is manifesting. Right. Uh, so it also means that at another time when they meet, you know maybe the following Sunday or you know whenever they are meeting, then to one is given this, to one is given the the other. So um, so today uh, I might manifest the gift of tongues and interpretation you know uh, uh, ne next day when I you know gather together and as I desire God to work through me there will be a word of knowledge right and I say okay um, this is what God is showing me that you have this problem um, maybe uh, another time it could be something else so so that is what you know it's in the context of um, uh, a gathering together and we'll understand that when we actually go to um, uh, chapter 14 also you know he's talking about you know a public gathering and he's talking about a time when you all gather together and an unbeliever walks in so he's in that context okay right. okay Pastor. so, so uh, yeah yeah i just had a follow-up so the uh except for praying in uh, the tongues or you know speaking in tongues except for that the other gifts are in a in the context of a gathering yeah, so so we see that praying in tongues. When we when we study praying in tongues, it has uh, it, it has a wide range of uh, there are different kinds of tongues, uh, you know, uh, and uh, and we see that there is praying in tongues for personal edification, right? So uh, when I'm uh, I'm personally edified, and that's what we see in one Corinthians fourteen, where he says that uh, uh, he who speaks he who prophesies uh, speaks edification and exhortation. Um, um, uh, which verse is that? Uh, verse four. Okay, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So you, we know that there is tongues for personal edification, but also there is tongues for 
interpretation you know suppose there is a message in tongues um and there is a you know a, there is the interpretation of tongues now that happens it can happen both in a you know personal setting individually and it can happen in a corporate setting as well right so he is addressing that uh, so we see that well tongues uh, works in that way tongues is a sign for the unbeliever again a corporate setting you know like just like how it happened in acts chapter 2 um, you know it it was a corporate setting as well so we see um, tongues you know specifically for tongues we see both um, yeah okay okay pastor thank you right. so okay much. okay so um yeah so just uh, so we are just kind of laying a foundation you know about tongue about the gifts of the spirit and you know how they work how they move and and so on uh, how they function sorry okay so uh, what are the best gifts so he's talking about the best gifts right so we see that best gifts are the gifts that are required for that particular uh, occasion for that particular challenge for that particular um uh, you know scenario right if somebody is if somebody needs encouragement then the best gift would be a gift of prophecy which brings edification exhortation and comfort right or it could even be a word of knowledge um and uh, which you know tells the believer that hey, god knows god knows me he's a, he knows my past he knows my present and therefore i can trust in him for the future right so um so it can be uh, it can work that way okay so uh, point number 8 right uh that is where we look uh, where we stop right? because uh, spiritual things can be taught okay believers can be taught and trained uh to move in the gifts to release the gifts of the spirit um so um we we need to again understand that okay because uh whenever we uh, uh you know we look at maybe training in the gifts of the spirit you know there is a wrong understanding okay maybe these people are taught to pray in tongues you know they are given these words to pray in tongues no that's not the case right uh, what is this teaching what is this learning it's to it's like how paul wrote to the corinthian church and he's actually teaching them right he's teaching them in the spiritual things right he's saying i don't want to be want you to be ignorant now these are the gifts this is what you do right he's actually teaching them right how to use it how not to use it use the gifts and so on so um so people can be taught these spiritual um, gifts um, we see several ways by which it happened you know spiritual discipling spiritual training uh, and also timothy being trained in the spiritual uh, things by paul right so he's writing to timothy you know especially second uh, uh, timothy chapter 2 verse 2 you know in in this verse we see that uh, he's saying you know commit these to faithful men okay you have heard these things taught to you and uh, you've heard me among many witnesses commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also what is he referring to spiritual matters right um, so these can be passed on taught to other believers same when it comes to timothy again paul says you know you don't neglect the gift stir up the gift uh, you know so we we know that yes god will use people to train to uh, to teach uh, and to get people to move in these gifts you know encourage um, to exercise and move in the move in the gifts right so we see several examples of that okay um so yeah just moving on to the next, okay i think that's all we have time for okay just one one last thing um to know just to state that these gifts can flow in conjunction with one another you know there which means that uh, well there could be a word of knowledge uh, followed by uh, let's say uh, uh, gifts of healing right so in the word of knowledge uh, oops i think somebody is presenting something abubakar um i think why mistake you are presenting something okay fine so um so that's the that's the thing right so uh, so it it will flow together like there is a word of word of knowledge probably uh, about some condition somebody is struggling with um so about uh, you know some uh, physical condition some emotional condition and then the gift of healing 
right? Uh, why? Because God wants to set it right. And so, so just flowing together. Uh, maybe God, you know, through the word of knowledge, um, God is uh, talking about some, um, some difficulty, some, some struggle that people are going through. And then the word of wisdom, um, just like Joseph, right? He say he also gave a solution for that famine. He said, you know, let's do this for the first seven years, build granaries, collect the grain. And so, you know, you can sell it when people do not have it through the years of famine. So there was that wisdom which uh, solved the problem, right? So, so it can flow to, um, together, right? So we need to understand that. Okay, so we'll stop here, and just want to encourage us to um, to you know to begin to I mean to continue praying in tongues. Maybe spend extended time praying in tongues. Those of you who who do pray in tongues, um, yes, we've you know we've seen that. Uh, okay, when I pray in tongues, I may not understand. That's fine. You continue to pray, pray in tongues. Ask God for the interpretation. You know, and just wait and see what is the what are the thought, what is the picture, what is the impression that God is putting in your hearts uh, in your heart vocalize it right for those of us who have not yet started praying in tongues you know just want to encourage you to start doing that right uh, pray and uh, perceive and you know you you pray out in in faith start out in faith maybe in your quiet time uh, in your you know personal time with god do that right and pray loud enough so you can hear yourself and um, yeah and just continue to do that right Okay, so we'll meet next class. Thank you so much. God bless you guys.